functions and uh, locally analytic functions. So today, uh, so I'm going to talk about distributions. And measures. Um, I think of all the the five talks, maybe this uh, this talk will be more have more applications uh, to uh, to like uh, periodic error functions. Um, but then. Next talk uh, will be a lot of Fagamo modules, but that's uh, very essential to the theory of uh, comets. So I think these two talks should be um, very important. So the first thing I want to talk about is e, uh, ring E and uh, ring R. So, so what is this? So we will think about this is. So at first uh, it's just uh, notations. So only in the theory of phi gamma module we will talk, talk about how we get this. But at this moment, we just want to say, OK, it's just like this. So, so it's a n t n. So n is contained in z. Now a n is in l. And um, we want this is bounded. And also, we want to say a n goes to 0 as n goes to minus infinity. So this is a field. So this is a field. And uh, you can take a, uh, the evaluation of this. We actually have this one. So basically, you just change this a n t n and containing L, you just A in OL, the certainty is already bounded. So N goes to minus infinity. So you, you get this one is just, and then you invert 1 over P. So this is, uh, is a field of characterist characteristic of 0. and. Uh, uh, this uh, you can have maximum idea so uh, it's generated by p. So we have uh, so this is a field. This is a real integer, and uh, we can also have this. So the residue field you see if you module p, so you get actually get this one uh, in our notation. So this is just k l. It's just k l. T is the the Roland series um, of KL. So for this OE, we have two topologies. So first the topology is periodic topology. So this is always the case. You you need to think of because we are talking about topological rings. So we need to to think about the topology. So. So there's a periodic topology because here what you get is to for module p. So if you assign this in discrete top topology and then induce this is just periodic topology. It just means uh, so the neighborhood near zero is just like p n o e, right? So this is periodic topology. So and then we have another topology is a, a little bit weaker, so but it's more nature, which is a nature topology. Why? Because so for this periodic topology, you think this is a discrete, but usually you don't think this is a discrete topology. Really, you want a topology like T topology inside this, right? So you give us our theory. We usually have a PT topology. So this is also like PT topology. So it's neighborhood near zero. So it's a basis. It's like PN. And then you, you plus TN. Oh, you can say this M. 
So we have two topologies. So we have these two rings. And for the ring E, you have some action. Uh, we call this phi gamma action. So phi, what is phi? Phi means for Venice. So usually, but at this moment, you didn't see the for Venice yet. You only, in the residue field, you will find it is for, for Venice. So basically here, we get phi is just 1 plus t to the power p minus 1. So if you module p, you can say it's t to the t t power p. So this is absolute for Venice, right? And so what is gamma? Gamma is, we are talking about this, uh, mm, um, so what is gamma? So gamma is just something like ZP extension. So what do we have? So if we have K, it's let's say infinity. So we can think about this K, and then we have the cyclotomic extension of K infinity, we just call it just K data P to the power infinity, okay? And then we, then we have K bar, so that's QP bar. So um, this one, we, we will always write this as G sub K. And then here we say is H sub K. And then this is gamma, so what is gamma sub K. So you know gamma QP, like uh, is uh, just ZP cross, right? So, so gamma is just this. For, for K is this, for QP, so here we, uh, uh, so gamma is, at this moment, is gamma uh, Q infinity of QP. QP infinity over QP. Okay, <laughs> uh, maybe for QP, we just say QP, mu p infinity over qp but then you know this is have a natural action to zp cross actually it's an isomorphism but we say this is chi so this is a cyclotomic character so what is this phi gamma module is uh, so this phi action is just t Gamma actually is, so for any gamma in gamma, so with gamma t is just one to plus t to the chi gamma minus one. So, so usually this phi gamma mode is just like this, okay? Uh, so here you always have this phi and gamma action. And now if we, now we need to talk a little bit more so it's, uh, we have another s some notation, so plus. So this E plus is just, uh, is just E intersects this, intersects this power series. So this uh, you can see is just O L T. And then you get this, 1 over P. So that's say uh, we will have a lot of notations today. Uh, so this is the, the first thing. First thing is about this. Now the second I will talk about is R. So for R1, let's say R2, are all contained in R. So we have these three rings. So this one, R1, R2, and is contained in this and contained okay so it's just some notation so there are three rings so what is this string this is just all those elements a is contained in z a n t n but it's analytic in R1 less than VPX less than v R2. So it's just all those 
is no one series, even yeah, is analytic in this area. Okay, uh, so and for this one is uh, you can you can think about this. You say is and the same thing is analytic plus bounded on R1 less than VPX, VP2, R2. So this one is the same, and there is analytic, not bounded, so it's just on this R1. OK, so, so these are the many things, actually. So this is a called over-convergent thing. So uh, we have this many rings. Now we can define this one. So you call E dagger. So this E plus, so this E dagger is just the union of all R bigger than 0, 0 R. And this R is just R bigger than 0. OK, so this is a field of all convergent element. So, and this is a ring. We call it a Roba ring. So it's ring of Roba. So the study of this uh, uh, periodic Hardy theory or periodic uh, um, phi gamma module, all this is all concentrated on this is e, e dagger and R. Okay. So then we, can, we also need some topology. Uh, so here we have this topology, but here, see, uh, for, for this one, this is subfield. This is a subfield of E. But this is not a subfield. But this is also contains E dagger. But and this, so if you take completion, you get R. You get R. OK. So that's different. So again, you have phi gamma action on this and this, because basically you just take phi gamma action and t. So for this t and for, for this gamma, you can have phi gamma actions. And the thing is, when you, I need to, so you need a little bit more is about the topologies and, and this field, and these rings. So all these are rings, OK? Uh, so, so if we define, so if, if, is a n t a n in d now f converges <coughs> in v p x is r and then you can you can compute this you can compute so what is this this just means uh, when n goes to plus or minus infinity uh, the order of all these general terms goes to zero. So, so it's VP AN plus MR goes to plus infinity. Okay? So that means we can define this uh, VR of F is just A is contained in the It's just this. OK. And, and now for this one, for this ring, we can define like the R1, R2 of F. It's just all this S is contained in R1, R2. And then you just V, S, F. But you can actually compute this. This is. It's nothing but the minimum of the R1F, 
v up to f. Okay. Um, and this because this is uh, uh, so under this one, then this become a Banach space. Then you can have a so this is a variation. This is a variation. So actually, if here you can you can deduce v r f of g is v r f plus v r g. Okay. So if both f and g converges in this circle, and then you can prove this one actually looks like a Valuation is not just semi valuation okay um, so for this this become Banach <coughs> um, this one is also you can under this valuation is also Banach but the, for the row array is a little bit complicated because uh, uh, because this is a limit so you have many valuations there so this is again Fresh air is a fresh air space. So we have all these. So we have this E and R, and we have action of phi and gamma. Action of phi and gamma. But the most important for the phi gamma module things is that we have another action called psi. So we need to say an action of psi. So basically, phi and so so if you want this uh, uh, the whole machinery to work, you need a psi. So what is psi? So we already did the defined phi and the gamma. So psi of f is nothing but you just take one over p, and then you phi inverse, and then trace. Say phi f. So, so you see, this is pure of purely inseparable, inseparable extension. So this extension is purely. Oh no, this is, this is not purely. Uh, so this is just a is a degree p. If you module module p, then it's purely separable. But this is degree zero, so so this is characteristic zero. So this is degree p. So so you can take actually take this, okay? So the psi f you, you just defined like this, but then there are some properties. So we have some propositions of psi. At this moment, I just give you some propositions. Later on, we will see. This more clearly. So, so first, all the phi gamma phi per psi commutes with gamma. So, and and all the all the actions. So certainly all actions are continuous. And also here you you want to say oh here it just looks like you only define this psi over e, right? So so first you define psi over e. Certainly by restriction you have psi over e dagger, because this is uh, is this, right? And then you by so you can define over e dagger. Then you because because of conti continuity. So you get psi over r, so this by continuity. So you have you have all this. So the first thing is that they just commute with gamma, so this is easy. The second one is you have psi f phi g. Is psi f times g. So if you take f equals 1, you can get psi phi g. So, so in particular, you can psi phi is identity. But 
but it's not commute to each other. Phi composite with psi is not identity. Okay, so it's just uh, one side inverse. It's not the other side. Um, the third thing about this psi is you can you can actually compute this. So if you have like i is zero to p minus one, and we also one plus t to the i, and then we have like uh, f i like one plus t to the p minus i. So you know this is just phi f i, right? So if we have this, then this is nothing but f zero t. It's just not f zero t. So you do, you don't need uh, the others. So you get this, okay? And uh, you can also have other properties, say like psi and f. So if you one plus t to the p minus one. So that's that's actually is phi psi f. You see. Uh, so this is phi psi f. You, we know. Psi phi is identity. Uh, then this you can actually compute it. Z p is one, and this is f zeta one plus z one plus t minus one. Okay. So this is this section. We we define these two rings. One is a field, and the other is ring. Is a robot ring. Uh, but this. Uh, it's, it's just a preparation. Now we are talking about, really talking about measures and distributions. So any questions? So, <clears throat> oh, so before we, uh, we leave, so we, we remember this E plus, okay. So this intersection LT, the same thing we have this R plus, it's just R intersect LT. This one we know this OLT and then 1 over P. So what is this? You can write it more clearly, A bigger than 0, A and T N. A n is contained in L and bounded. Right? So this one is the, this function. So, so this function analytic in or in this Zero plus. Okay, we recall we have B zero R, so it's a ball, right? So this is just a, an open ball. Okay, it's 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 just this is it's just all x with p x bigger than zero. Okay, so so this this is plus. Okay, so that's this thing. <coughs> now. Oh, now we are talking about uh, uh, something um, more about this uh, this E and R is about duality or residue and duality. So the third thing, uh, yeah, residue and duality. So for f of d, f of d t. We take the residue f of dt, we just say is a minus 1. If ft ak t to the power k, we just define this residue is just like this. And uh, then the thing we want, want to know is this proposition, and we are going to use it, is this proposition. Uh, the pairing, 
So it's n for d uh, we goes to uh, residue at zero and f g dt over one plus t induces isomorphisms. So this is easy to check. You can um, of e and r to itself to themselves. Okay, so we have residue, but this residue is uh, very nature. You in the, all this geometry study, you have this residue, or in, in functional analysis or in complex analysis. You get this, so you have duality. Now we will talk about distributions. And measures. So, so what is so a distribution is just an element in we we just write down like this. So D means distribution, and this is the locally analytic function. The, the dual space of the locally analytic function of ZP. So, so what is this? So it's just a continuous linear fractional. If you say it's it's, it's functional, right? So linear functions from Zp to L. So, so usually what we denote is say with a new is a distribution, and then say so we usually is just like f. We use integration f mu, okay? So this is just say you have a function, local locally analytic function. You get a, a element in L, okay? So so that's the distributions. So what is measure? So measure is easy. So a measure you can just change a little bit. So it's just an element. In D0, ZPL, so it's just a, it's just a, all this continuous function, the deal of this, you know, this is a Banach space. So you have dual, is, you get a Banach space. So this is a, uh, is a measure. So certainly, you can see a measure is always a distribution, because, and because it locally analytic is always continuous, right? So, so one one side is always true, but this uh, um, distributions. There are more distributions than measures. Okay. <coughs> Now we have. The, now we can define uh, for mu is contained in D. So we get L A H. You know the mu is at least the restriction. We can uh, we can work on functions to L, right? So mu you can have this. So we have this V L A H mu. I just define as the minimum of O F and the V P 
f mu minus we l a h f. So it's just a dual valuation as we defined uh, in the first section, section 1.1. .1, we define like this because this is Banach space. So if you want mu is contained is a distribution, certainly is an element is a continuous function from a locally analytic function of level h to l. So you can define this. So from this one, you can get d is a fresh space. So you have all these valuations are new. It's not only one, but many. For all h, you have this. Um, and for mu, contained in d0, and then you can have, also you can have this vd0 mu. minus f, right? So, so from this, then f you can get this is a Banach space because it's a dual. So this is a Banach space. This is a special space. Um, and uh, you have all this dual theory, OK? <coughs> Now, before we will give many examples later, but before that, uh, let's state uh, a definition and the most uh, important theorem in this. So, definition so for mu contained in D, uh, we define the Amis transform. is the formal power series so it's m u t it's just this d p 1 plus t to the power x mu but then this doesn't make sense at all right this uh, y y you have a variable here you don't have a continuous uh, or locally analytic but so but recall so here recall one plus t x is what so this is a Newton um, formula right for this one plus t to the x so formally it's just this t n and then you take in integration of x and mu. So this one is well defined. So you get a formal power series. Okay. So this is the Amis transform of a, of a distribution. Then it's also of a measure. <coughs> uh, one little number is this. This is a formal power series, but if we p z is bigger than zero, then we can have z p one plus z to the x. This is a, this is a locally analytic function actually, so it's just a mu z. Okay, uh, but this is easy proof. You can if you can see this n is 0 to infinity, x n, z n. So this 1 plus z x, um, this is, OK, or you can say from like big n. And this converges to 1 plus z x is uniformly. Uh, or you, oh, anyway, it's, it's just a series, okay? Uniformly, 
in L A H for 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 H say say some H V P D is bigger than or equal to bigger than one over p minus one p to the h. Then this is a locally analytic function in LAH if VPZ is bigger than this. And this converges to this uniformly. So you can exchange the integration and the summation. That's why you get this equals this. Okay. So this is just a, um, a exercise of calculus analysis. Okay. So now, now it's this. So now we have the main theorem in these two lectures. So this is the main theorem. Um, the map mu goes to MUT induces isomorphisms of D zero ZPL goes to okay. So this is isomorphism and this R D Okay, so we just define this E plus and R plus. Okay, the second one is the map. Which map? So F in those two phi F, this phi F is, is just this, it's just residue zero. 1 plus t to the x, f of t, dt over t, 1 plus t, um, induces isomorphisms um, of this over plus C0 ZP O ZP L and then E dagger this is by continuity this is over R plus it goes to L A Z P L. Okay. And the third thing is you get this Z P phi F mu is zero A mu F D T over one plus T. Okay, so here is for f is contained in u and e, and the mu is e in d zero, or f in r, mu is in d. Okay, so what this theorem says is this: you can see, uh, at least we have exact sequence. See, so zero goes to 
D0, so it's C0, Zp, or dual goes to E, goes to C0, Zp, L goes to 0. You see? Because this one is just D0, and D0 is just E, uh, is e plus. And then E over E plus is just this. OK? So this, and also 0 goes to uh, LA ZP L dual goes to R. See? And because you take the residue, you find it because R and the E, they are dual to itself. So you can see, if you then take the dual again, you get the same exact sequence. Okay. So this kind of thing is quite amazing because you relate it, uh, you relate all these uh, continuous functions and it's dual into an exact sequence. And then you just need to study this field. And here you just need to study this row by ring. Okay. So, so this is why the theorem is quite amazing. And also from the isomorphism here, if you want to study distributions or measures, you just need to study its Amis transform. There is a power series instead of some functions. So you just need to study the power series. Okay. Um, and also, so here, I haven't talked about how do you make a product of, uh, because this one certainly is a ring, right? It's a field. So you can take a product to element. But here, I haven't defined the product of two measures yet. So what is, uh, if you have two distributions, what is the, dis the product? Or you have two measures, what is the product? So we haven't defined this yet. But this is always topological isomorphism. So later on, I will define what is the, the convolution or the product of two m measures. Okay. Um, but if you just want to, def to, s to prove at the Banner space and the fresh air space, there are isomorphisms. So you can see my notes. And the div in different places, you can see the proof of this and the proof of this. Uh, but you can also, if you understand more deeply about the duality, see, so the proof of the theorem, so if you just talk about the, as, not the isomorphism, topologic rings, not as a rings, just a boundary space or fresh air space, so one follows from what? By duality, from um, from this, from the theorem we, we studied yesterday. So what is theorem? So what is F is contained in C0, Zp, L, then F is ANF, XN, and N F bonded and uh, goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Moreover, so you, you, here you can even say this uh, isomorphism. F is L A H. This is as, or LA is if on if this, um, the order VP ANF plus uh, minus RN bigger than zero for some R bigger than zero. Okay, so if you 
look at this theorem and take this dual, you get this too. See, uh, we look, so we call this E, e is just AN, TN, uh, BN, TN. Okay. Uh, BN bonded. So you see, this one is just, is just a dual of this. See, you 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 recall what we say. We we studied L infinity n L is the dual of L infinity n L dual. Recall that. Remember this, and. Uh, you see, this one, this is Mahler theorem. Mahler theorem basically say the C0, C0 um, ZPL is just L infinity. It's just this, OK? And now you take the dual. You just get L infinity. This. So this is just bounded. Why this is bounded? And here you have a, you have a, have to goes to zero as n goes to zero because it's in L zero L infinity zero. Okay. So and then what is R plus? R plus is this because you need the uh, uh, you need the uh, uh, so this one is a little bit this. Um, it's converges in this ball, in this open ball. So it's just uh, um, VP. So, the ex so it's for any r bigger than 0, uh, VP BN plus RN goes to infinity. Uh oh. Th this is goes to plus infinity, OK, as n goes to infinity. So this is r plus. And then you, you can see it's also a dual of this, OK? So this is just a duality of the first one. And the second one, we need to compute this. Um, let's see. That is uh, also. It's easy. We, let, let, let me just prove it, maybe. OK. Uh, for the second one, I just let Pasar F is just the residue at 0, 1 plus t to the x. Um, F t dt. OK. And uh, now we just say if f a k t k, you can you can compute this because since one plus t to the x n bigger than zero, x n t n. Now you can just compute this. You can compute this, so we get. Um, we get this uh, Poisson f of x. It's nothing but it's k contained in n a minus one minus k x n. Okay. Now you compute this, and uh, this is really an isomorphism because you can write down this C zero ZPL and this L A ZPL explicitly using Mahler's theorem, in this, using this theorem. So you compute this, you get a Poisson inducer isomorphism. Then Poisson F induce isomorphisms. But you see, and the phi F, what is phi F? 
this five is just for five um, x minus one. Yeah, for five x minus one. So if this induces isomorphisms, and then this five also induces isomorphism. Okay, so that's why you get isomorphism of all these. So here I didn't uh, make explicit about f. So you can let f contain in E or R, but you can get the same result. You get the same result, and then you get two. So for three, it's just you just take the definition because you have. This psi f is just this. Now this nu, you can you can write down explicitly. Uh, nu is um, nu t one plus t to the x nu. Now you just need to exchange. Exchange the two operations, the residue and the integration. But this is just by linearity. And because this is a formal identity, so you can just exchange it, and uh, you, this should be good. So that's why you get uh, property number three. But I think the most uh, important thing is just this. We use analysis. We get uh, to a purely algebraic exact sequence. Okay, so this is the exact sequence we have. Um, maybe so we have some break, and I will start later.